Well, welcome back to Read Through the Bible. Today we're picking up in 2 Kings 17. Now, we are approaching the end of the existence of the northern kingdom of Israel. Assyria is about to defeat the last of the 19 kings of the north, Hosea, and the northern kingdom is about to end its existence. So, as you pick up in verses 1 through 6, here in 732 BC, Hosea either kills Pekah or has Pekah killed, and he becomes the last of the 19 kings of the north and the ninth dynasty and the final dynasty in the north. Now, we probably need to define a dynasty. A dynasty, very simply put, is a succession of kings or leaders from one family. There are nine of these in the north. There's only one dynasty in the south. There'll be 20 kings, but they're all from the same family in the south. And uh, these are of the house and lineage of David. We know that fulfilling the Davidic covenant. Remember what it says in 2 Samuel 7, verse 16, your throne shall be established forever. So Hosea comes on the scene in 732 and reigns till 722. He's a very evil king. Um, Hosea has entered into this agreement with Assyria, but he tries to get Egypt to support him against Assyria because of the tribute that he's forced to pay, so he stops paying tribute. The Assyrians get furious, capture him, imprison him. The whole land is invaded, and Samaria, the capital city of the northern kingdom, is besieged for three years, defeated, terrible famine during the time of this three-year siege, and they're carried off into the Assyrian exile. So, Verses 7 through 23 of chapter 17 kind of deal with answering this question, why did God allow the northern kingdom to be destroyed? Well, it was because of idolatry. They followed the idolatry of the Canaanites, the kings of Israel, Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Remember the high places that he built, the ashram he set up. He, he did all kinds of things that were evil in the sight of God. In fact, it says, he sold them to do evil in the sight of the Lord. He set up the places of worship in Bethel and Dan to keep them from going back to Jerusalem because he was worried about keeping the kingdom more than he was about obeying God. They served uh, all types of idols. They worshiped the sun, the moon, the stars. They even sacrificed their children <coughs> to Moloch, um, the, the detestable God. And so only Judah is left after the northern kingdom is taken off into the captivity. So... Assyria kind of deports people from other places and brings them into uh, the area of the northern kingdom. And in an incredible story, lions attack many people. They're killed, and so they tell <coughs> the Assyrian king about this. And so they decide that what they need to do is bring in priests uh, that were from Israel, the north. Of course, these a lot of these priests themselves were not good. So they come in to teach people, quote, unquote, the truth because they do not know the law and the religion of the land. So they brought in these and, and they kind of created all this mixed up worship um, between <clears throat> uh, the worship of Yahweh, the true God, and all these idols, not to mention the, the idols that all these people have been resettled in this area brought in. And this kind of created this syncretism, this, this worship, this hodgepodge of many religious systems. And this is the whole area. Remember this takes place in the area of Samaria? Well, remember the Samaritans in the time of Jesus? They're the descendants of these, and they have all this mixed up worship. And that's why the Samaritans were so despised by the Pharisees and others in Israel at the time of Jesus. So <clears throat> that brings us to 2 Kings 18. Here we have the story of King Hezekiah. Now, King Hezekiah reigned for 29 years. He began to reign in the third year of Hosea. A very good king. Um, do you remember the story of in Numbers 21, uh, verses 4 and following? You have there the story of the fiery serpents and the bronze serpent that was put up on the standard. And if you looked at it, you would be healed, pointing to the coming of Jesus Christ. Well, this uh, bronze serpent is still around during the time of Hezekiah. In fact, it has a name, Nahashtan, and it's worshipped as an idol. Uh, you know, it could have been a good thing to have this relic in remembrance of, 
of God's faithfulness to Israel back in the wilderness wanderings. But they took it and they turned it into an idol. It kind of reminds us of how Mary has been distorted and worshipped instead of being celebrated as a righteous woman and one that was obedient to God. It has been made into an idol. So we need to be careful about that, that we worship God and God only through his son Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. So now, after the taking the northern kingdom, uh, Assyria decides that, well, we just might as well get Judah too. So in the 14th year of Hezekiah's reign, 701 <coughs> B.C., the armies of Assyria come to Jerusalem, and they threaten Jerusalem. Um, now, Hezekiah, in the meantime, has failed to pay tribute, and he apologizes for this. And so they say what we need is 300 talents of silver. A talent is 75 pounds, a massive amount of silver. 300 talents of silver, 30 talents of gold. Um, you can do the math on that. They, they empty the treasury, cut the gold off the temple doors. Well, Assyria is not satisfied with this. So they send part of the army from Lachish that they are surrounding to Jerusalem with uh, the general and the commander. His name is very famous in the Bible, Rabbi Shekha. And they say to him, what we are demanding is the full surrender of Judah, the southern kingdom. And they even cry out to the people sitting on the city walls around Jerusalem, don't let Hezekiah fool you, and they mock God. So uh, 2 Kings 19, uh, kind of, the story continues. In the first seven verses here, Hezekiah is told of the threat of Assyria and all that Rabbi Shekha said. He tore his clothes. He sends envoys to the prophet Isaiah, and they ask Isaiah, please pray for us. And Isaiah prays and gets his answer from God and sends it back. Don't fear, I will put a spirit and he will return home and he will fall by the sword that is Sennacherib, the leader of Assyria, in his own country. Well, so Hezekiah tells Sennacherib, we're not going to meet your demands. Sennacherib sends Rabbishekah back and he said, none of the gods of all the lands that I've taken have been able to deliver them. Why do you think? that your God, the Lord, will be able to deliver you. And he makes all these threats. So Hezekiah goes into the temple, lays out the letter from Isaiah before the Lord, calls on the Lord, deliver us, he says, so that all may know that you are God. And so God was faithful. He delivers uh, Judah in an incredible way, in an incredible way. The angel of the Lord comes and puts to death 185,000 Assyrians that are surrounding uh, Judah, Jerusalem. And so Sennacherib goes back in disgrace, and 20 years later, the story is, remember what Isaiah said? He'll fall by the sword. Well, he's worshiping his God in his own land in the city of Nineveh, and as he's worshiping his idol God, two of his sons come in and kill him. Two of his own sons come in and kill him. And so they run away, and so Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled, and Jerusalem is spared. Now, chapter 20 is kind of a postscript to what has happened, because it tells us here in chapter 20, in verses 1 through 7, that during this siege, Isaiah became sick. And the Lord told him, put, in house, put your house in order, you're about to die. So he prayed, and God said, I'm going to add 15 years to your life and deliver Assyria deliver you from Assyria for the sake of my servant David, pointing back to the Davidic covenant. All this is very important. So God even gave Hezekiah a sign, the sun on the stairway of Ahaz. Read it. It's the first time in the Bible there's the mention of keeping time. So, so uh, God told Hezekiah, do you want the sun to go forward or to go backwards? He says, a little thing to go forward, let it go backwards. So it did, and this was a sign. And during this time, something interesting happens. In verses 12 through 20 kind of describe this. That a delegation comes from Babylon with letters. And remember, uh, Hezekiah has been healed in presence because he was sick, and, and now he's healed. And Hezekiah shows him everything he's got. And Isaiah chastises him because ultimately... Babylon is going to come and take the southern kingdom, not in Hezekiah's lifetime, uh, not for 100 years or so after this. But Hezekiah doesn't seem to perceive all of this. Uh, might want to be careful who you show what you've got sometimes. That's in 
2 Kings 20. And then in 2 Kings 21, it describes the most wicked of all the kings of Judah. His name is Manasseh. He reigned for 55 years. Worst king. Idolatry, Baal worship, desecration of the temple. Uh, the Bible says he seduced Israel. And then his son Ammon comes after him, and he reigns for two years. So 55, until you have these 57 terrible, terrible years in Judah. And then 2 Kings 22 describes the rise of the great King Josiah, best of the kings since David. Reigns 31 years, um, has his bad grandfather Manasseh and father Ammon. But as they were redoing um, uh, some work in the temple, at least God laid that on his heart, they find a copy of the law, the, the first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch. And so Josiah reads this, and he's utterly distraught. He's, he's repentant. Our fathers have not listened to the words of this book to do according to all that was written concerning us. And he consults a, a prophetess, Huldah. Remember, there are several prophetesses in the Bible, Deborah, Miriam, an unnamed one in Isaiah, Anna, and, and Philip's four daughters in the New Testament. And so she said that Judah would be judged because of the sin of, of Manasseh and, and all of that but not during Josiah's lifetime because he was repentant, but the judgment would come. Good news for Manasseh, bad news for um, Judah. So uh, 2 Kings 23 tells us of the great revival that Josiah leads. He comes near the pillar of the temple, reads the whole law, the first five books of the Bible, in front of all the people. The Bible says the great and the small, and they make a covenant to keep all the book of the law. So he breaks down the, the houses of the male cultic prostitutes that were in the house floor. He believe this in the very temple. And, and so he goes and cleans all these idols out of the temple. Uh, it's just incredible how bad things have gotten. So all Jerusalem and Judah are cleansed of, of idolatry. The Bible goes into great detail there. Um, how he even destroyed uh, the false areas and altars of worship in Bethel and Dan. There's a prophecy there. They celebrated Passover uh, in, in, a, in a fantastic way, even better than, than it had been during the time of Hezekiah. But at any rate, Josiah, even though he leads this great revival and turns the nation back towards God, they're still going to be judged because of the sin of Manasseh. So Manasseh is killed in 609 by Pharaoh Necho in Megiddo. Um, and then his son... <coughs> Jehoahaz reigns for three months. Well, he is deposed by that same Pharaoh that killed him. And in 609, Pharaoh Necho makes Jehoiakim. Now you have Josiah, Jehoahaz, three months. And then Jehoiakim, he reigns for 11 years. Now, the problem for Jehoiakim is that during his reign, Nebuchadnezzar, Babylon, becomes the predominant power, as, as we all know. So he kind of served him for three years. Then in 605, he rebels. Babylon comes down, takes control, deports uh, the first deportation. Daniel is taken out this time. <clears throat> Jehoiakim dies, um, and then Jehoiachin becomes king for three years. He is removed from that. And then Zedekiah uh, will reign for another 11 years. Now, we need to remember that, that there are three kind of comings by Nebuchadnezzar against Jerusalem. 605, the first deportation. 597, the second deportation. And then in 2 Kings 25, it describes the end of Jerusalem. So, remember, Zedekiah is set up as king, and he's going to reign in total for 11 years. But in the ninth year of the reign of Zedekiah, he rebels against Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar brings the entire army. They besiege Jerusalem for three years, from January of 588 B.C. to July of 586 B.C., 30 months. The famine gets so bad um, that people are literally resorting to cannibalism. A lot of the prophets talk about this. Um, the Book of Lamentation talks about this. Jerusalem's wall is broken down. Zedekiah is captured trying to escape. <clears throat> his eyes are gouged out. The last thing he sees are his sons being put to death before his eyes. And ne Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, comes. Jerusalem is burned. The walls are broken down. The deportation takes place. Judah goes into exile. They even carry away what is left of the temple. So you have this sad ending. A man named Gedali is appointed governor, and he himself is murdered. So this brings us to the end of the story of Judah. God bless you. Read the Bible.